Hey family, thank you all so much for tuning in. I pray you're well. I'm excited to see you guys and to share this word with y'all. And I have a song today. So those of you who have been praying for me to sing, I'm singing, we singing today. So get your water and tea. I need my background singers. Y'all gotta be ready, okay? So water and tea, get ready. If you gotta pause the video, do that. But we are singing and listen, I'm singing in my key today all right so <laughs> i'm gonna try to sound good so y'all let me know how i do in the comments and then also this song the lord just dropped it on my spirit as i was finishing my notes to come on and so how much more special and on top of that as i'm talking to you guys i'm getting a revelation through my shirt this design on my shirt that goes with the word I, i'm just now realizing this and so this is about to be off the chain. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm just, <laughs> I just love you so much. I'm just so thankful, Lord, that you just continue to speak to us and just even speak through me for your people, Lord God, to lead them um, in the way that they shall go as you have charge me to do so as you have commanded me to do so and so father i ask that this word be seed planted and watered in the hearts and minds of your people that you would give the increase to in due season from the inside out yes and impart this word into their spirit boom let it confirm what it is that they've been feeling and sensing by the spirit and then just what you've spoken through me over the past week and so i thank you lord for this word, let it be all of you and none of me. Give me an even fresher anointing and revelation as I release it in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Your wisdom is unmatched. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. And so I believe the last message that I released, I was talking to you guys about, unfortunately, having to go through some more warfare. Okay. So those of you who have like entered into your promised land. I mentioned Joshua and the Israelites taking on uh, Jericho. And then from there, they had to fight AI, right? And so I've been telling you guys this, I think now for almost a month that the Lord keeps highlighting the number 17 to me, right? And so I've learned that to be victory, um, triumphing. I also looked up the number 17 and God gave me a revelation through the Hebrew alphabet that the 17th letter is the pay. And so that is equivalent to a symbol that is shaped like a mouth. And so God was saying also in this season to speak, right? To decree, to declare, to open our mouths, right? Don't be silent. Speak those things that are not as though they are because they already are in the spirit. But today, what kept coming to my spirit was stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. And so what? this is how the word unfolded. I could barely get it out. So as I was just working behind the scenes, I kept looking at my calendar on my phone and my iPad and all of that. And I kept zooming in on the 17th because it said Ashura. And I'm like, what is this Ashura? Like, you know how it the calendars will highlight all of the, um, I was about to say wedding dates. What? <laughs> all of the, um, somebody, somebody's getting married. Who is it? Somebody's getting married. <laughs> somebody call the preacher. Somebody get the cake. If Okay. The first person who knows where that song came from and puts it in the comments, I'm going to send you $50. I'm going to cash up it to you, okay? I'm going to say I got you in the comments so that you know I saw your comment, okay? So, yes, the song I just sang about getting married. <laughs> Put it in the comments. One, two, three, go. All right, so I kept seeing it on the calendar, and you know how the calendar gives us all the holidays in the United States, right? And so anyway, I kept seeing it as I've been working like all week. And I'm like, Ashura, like what is Ashura? Like, what is this? So it is spelled A-S-H-U-R-A. -A, and you'll see it on your calendar on the 17th of July. 
And so before I even investigated it, I was still just going about my day to day. And I saw it again, maybe about a day ago, but what came to my spirit was the Asherah pole. And so these were the poles of idol worship that the Lord asked the Israelites to remove after he had given them the 10 commandments again and forgave their sin and all of that from the golden calf. Okay. And so hold on to that. All right. Idol worship. Also in order for the Lord to deliver his promise to the Israelites, giving them the land of Canaan, giving them the land flowing with milk and honey. They had to get rid of the idols. They had to get rid of anything else that would tempt them to turn away from the Lord. Okay. And this is what he's saying to some of you in this season. Let me not get ahead of myself. And so I looked up Ashura and I found out that it is a Muslim holiday. So they celebrate this, but it correlates with what God did for Israel as he led the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity and parted the Red Sea and led them into liberation or freedom. All right. And so on the Hebrew side of this, we are in the month of Tammuz and the 17th day of the month, there were some significant things that happened. And I'm going to read them. The first one is that Moses broke the tablets when he saw the Israelites worshiping the golden calf. Okay. So we're back to idol worship. And this is what God is highlighting. And then also there was an idol placed in the temple. The Torah was burned and the Babylonian siege of Jerusalem happened. And so listen, I'm trying to keep this all together. I pray y'all still here. And so a lot of you have been feeling in the spirit. And as I mentioned earlier, some of you are still warring, right? You're fighting your battle because you're taking on new territory, new land, moving deeper into your purpose, your promise. Some of you entering in from the wilderness, all right? And so what God is highlighting during this month of Tammuz, during the month of July on the Gregorian calendar, July being a month of liberation or freedom, okay? Don't get in the comments playing around about Juneteenth and the 4th of July and all that. You're going to get blocked, okay? But listen, if you live in America, we celebrate the 4th of July, okay? And so listen, and I'll say this too. Every month, I just found this out as I've been doing my research. For those who want to get in the comments playing around, every month in the Hebrew calendar has Babylonian origin. And I found that the Israelites kept the names Babylonian to remind them of their victory, how God led them out. All right. And so don't get in the comments playing around about what you celebrate and what you don't celebrate and all that stuff. You're going to get blocked. Okay. And so listen, help me, Holy Spirit. And so what God is highlighting here, those of you who are, again, feeling that tension in the spirit. Uh, you're fighting your battle, right? There's another land that you have to take, but God is saying, stand still and see my salvation. And while you're doing that, while he is fighting on your behalf, he also is correcting you. He also is doing a, an inventory, like a renewal before you enter into the new land. Some of you have grown weary in your well-doing and it caused you to backslide and obtain idols again. So whether it was a man idol, a woman idol, food idol, you know, being lukewarm, whatever it's been, God is bringing it all under judgment right now. He is challenging you in this month of Tammuz. He wants you to grow from your mistakes, right? So he's calling you to repentance. He is exposing all things. And this is why we're seeing exposure on such a large scale. As I mentioned last week, the Lord is just cleansing his body before he can do his next big move, right? He wants it clean. He wants his house clean. And so that begins with each of us individually and then as a whole in the body of Christ. And so what I want to highlight here is Joshua chapter 10 verses 12 through 14. And this was a miraculous thing that happened as Joshua was helping the Gibeonites fight the Amorites. All right. 
And so Joshua pretty much prayed to the Lord and asked him for more daylight to stop the sun. I'm going to read verse 13. It says, so the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation of Israel took vengeance upon their enemies. And so this is what God is doing. I believe there's a miracle of some sort that he's performing right now in this season as you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord as he fights the enemies on your behalf you're also yes doing what you need to do as Joshua was fighting the enemies the Amorites but the Lord did something for him supernaturally to give him victory, right? And so this is what the Lord is saying. The 3rd of Tammuz or the 3rd of July, right before that Independence Day on the Gregorian calendar, right? God is leading you into liberation. He's going to do it supernaturally, but you have to keep going in the natural. You have to keep doing what it is that he has called you to do or showed you to do so that you can see the victory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So study out Joshua 10, 12 through 14, as you get a chance. But Exodus 14, 10 through 14, I'm not going to read it all. You can study that out too. But that is just the scripture. Actually, it's verse 13 that Moses says to the people of Israel, don't be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, which were the enemy, whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And so God is saying, you're not going to have to deal with these giants or this enemy again, whatever it is that he is delivering you from. He doesn't want you to have to face those giants again. He is parting the Red Sea for you. Okay, he is doing it for you. All you have to do is believe. If I go back up to verse 10 here, the children of Israel are basically just going bonkers. They see their enemy pursuing them and they're just going crazy. They think that this is the end. They think that they have no chance. And maybe that's you. Maybe that's what's going on in your life right now as things are going haywire, as things are becoming challenging, as the promised land looks unobtainable to you which it isn't but that's what it seems because of the giants in the land because of the fear that you feel because of maybe you don't think you're qualified or maybe you think it's just beyond you this vision that god has given you he's going to do it supernaturally through you he's going to strengthen you but stand and see the salvation of the lord and so god is rebuilding his temple he is rebuilding his house and that is you and before he can place this next thing in your hand, this next blessing, this next promise into your hands, the vessel has to be clean. And I'll just raise my hands because I'm not exempt, right? And so God is not playing around. He wants purity. He wants holiness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't get discouraged because what you are building for the Lord or higher than that, just you stepping into being a hot Christian, right? On fire <laughs> Christian and no longer lukewarm. Don't get discouraged because it may seem like, you know, you're being too serious or it may seem like you can't have fun anymore, or it may seem like, you know, nobody understands you, right? God is going to connect you with your tribe when it's time. Those of you who are waiting for that. Also, those of you who are just in this funky place where, if I could use that word, where you're in transition, right? Because this is still a transitional season, but you're in transition into the more refined you, right? Like you shed off the lukewarmness and then you feel strange. Like God is going to bring you into yourself. I pray that makes sense. If that's resonating with you, drop some fire emojis in the comments. But I just felt that on my heart as the Lord brought it to me to pour that into you, to let you know you're right on track. You're not supposed to look like the world. You're not supposed to act like the world, right? And so, yeah, 
dress nice, look nice. Don't get in the comments playing around. But this is an inside out job, right? And so you may just be struggling getting used to not being able to do the things you used to do or go to places you used to go. But when you follow the Lord, when you allow him to be the Lord of your life, Lord Jesus, the Lord of your life, you don't want to do the things you used to do. You don't want to go to places you used to go. But out of quote unquote loneliness, sometimes it may seem like that's what you want to do. But God is going to just build your life up so beautifully from where you are. I hear from the ground up. <laughs> and that is the foundation of the Lord from the ground up. Everything that could be shaken has been shaken so that what cannot be shaken remains. And that's where you are. You're standing on the solid rock, the rock of ages. Come on, Holy Spirit. And that's the best place to be. It's the best place to be. So trust your process, trust your journey. Yes. And if you've been led to my voice, God is going to do something major in your life. He, he brings to me all of his entrepreneurs. Okay. Everybody that he is equipping to branch out and do marketplace ministry. That's who I service in my life coaching business. And so if you're listening to this, I've coached hundreds of people. I know this. He's led you here to this word today for this. Okay. So just know that he's cleansing you. He's giving you a fresh start. He's renewing you. He's calling some things uh, to the forefront for you to deal with so that you can obtain the promise, the milk and honey that he has reserved for you. And so I pray that blesses you. That wasn't in my notes. All right, y'all. We're about to sing. Me, 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 me. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So as I was getting my notes together, the Lord dropped the song on me. So I'm talking about standing and seeing the salvation of the Lord. And I heard in my spirit, loud and clear, the song Stand By Me by Ben E. King from 1962. And I'm going to say something else too after we sing and then I'm done. So let's go. One, two, three. When the night has come, you, you know this. And the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see. That light is Jesus. Come on. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. Come on, y'all. So darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Oh, stand. Stand by me. Stand by me. If the sky that we look upon dun -dun -dun, should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea. Come on, mighty God. Come on. Do y'all hear the Lord in this? I won't cry. I won't cry. No, I won't shed a tear. This is God speaking. Do y'all hear this? Just as long as you stand, stand by me. And Jesus, Jesus, stand hey, by me. <laughs> oh, stand by me. Oh, stand now. Yes, stand by us. Stand by us. Mm, mm. <laughs> so wait a minute. It's one more line. At the end, it says, whenever you're in trouble, won't you stand by me? And I heard Jesus in that. Like the Lord is saying, like, whenever you're in trouble, stand by me. And this is what he is saying in this whole word today. Like, if you need to repent, repent. He's right there with you. He's standing right there by you. If you're in trouble, whatever it is, whatever needs to be shaken out of your life, whatever he's bringing under his righteous judgment, the Lord is saying, I am right there with you. I am standing by you as you stand by me. So listen, we did good. Hold on. Let me clap it up before I go forward. So listen, <laughs> I don't have any sense, but the Lord made me. I'm y'all sister. I love y'all. Okay. And so listen. 
I looked up the number 1962 in the Hebrew concordance because I wanted to see if it just had any significance, if it resonated with today's word or what. And so before I did that, I was singing the song and I looked up a video that I link in the description that has the song with the lyrics so you guys can play it back. I know some of y'all making a playlist and maybe I should do that. All the songs I've been singing that the Lord has given me, I need to make a playlist, but some of y'all have been doing that. So anyway, as I'm singing the song and when it got to the part, whenever you're in trouble, once you stand by me, the Lord was just loving on me, filling my belly up like with just whatever he was depositing in my spirit womb. And I just yelled out, hi-ya. And so I've said that before in my heavenly language, but I never looked up what it meant, right? And so I go to 1962 in the Hebrew concordance. And y'all not going to believe this. The word it correlates to is hi-ya, the same word that I said out of my mouth. But I didn't feel, I felt like love in that, okay? So let me just tell y'all. It's spelled H-A-Y-Y-A-H, but it's pronounced Haya. That's exactly what I said, as God is my witness. And so the word means calamity. And so calamity is a disastrous event. It can cause harms, harm to buildings, economies, environments, communities. That can be anything from an avalanche to an earthquake, whatever, right? A hurricane, right? And so I got revelation in my shirt and you see it's kind of swirling like the motion of a tropical storm. But do y'all see the rainbow in that? God's covenant is true. His protection is sure. It's a sure thing. Whenever the calamity comes, tumultuous times, all the things that are happening right now on the earth, the hurricane that just passed through, Hurricane Beryl. I even thought of Beryl as the, the, the stone or the, is it a stone, I think, um, that is on the wheel, within the wheel that Ezekiel talked about, the rims. <laughs> God is so funny. He got rims. He... <laughs> He got BBS. He got gold BBSs. <laughs> I'm not editing this. Lord, you know I don't have no sense. You made me. <laughs> the Lord got these heavenly creatures around his throne, these wheels within the wheel with all these eyes and they move with the wheels. They, they move by the spirit of the Lord. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> The wheels had barrel. This is what he said, but I'm just silly. So I'm saying gold BBSs. But if you don't know what a gold BBS rim is, look it up. All right. It is a tire rim for a car. Okay. All right. So the Lord knows me. He knows I'm silly. I love you, Lord. I know you love me too. All right. So that's it. So just trust God in whatever the storm is, whatever calamities that come to this nation or to the world, whatever it is, God is saying, trust me, I got you. All right. So I pray that you all enjoyed this word today. I know I surely did. I had such a great time. I love you guys so much with the love of Christ. Play this word back to get it into your spirit. Share it with someone if they came to mind. I appreciate all of your support and I will talk to you soon.